Let's take a look at this basic avoider part 4 code. You can find that at hunkim.com slash share slash avoid4.fla and if you uh, run it, control enter, you can see we have a start screen. Click on a button and we can just use our mouse keys immediately to avoid things and uh, I'm just going to let this game speed up a bit. So it's getting faster and faster and it's uh, becoming quite challenging here. I noticed that only the yellow and red colliding means we actually collide. And it's getting quite fast, so I'm going to purposely crash here. It says, you died. Try again. So when I click try it again, I can immediately move my keys, the arrows, to, to uh, play again. And the game resets in terms of score as well as speed. So let's take a look at what's new here. I'm going to click on the actions layer here. Go to window actions or F9. <clears throat> I notice that uh, I have this li new line of code called stage.focus equals this. So somehow if you uh, work with multiple scenes, uh, the, the idea of a start screen and a the end screen, when you actually switch between screens you might actually lose focus where you actually have to click on the the screen before you can move your keyboards, um, your arrows <clears throat> to move around. So uh, it's because we lost focus is a security feature but to bring focus so that you don't have to re-click on the game we just use this line of code. This refers to the actual uh, game. The game itself is a movie clip so we're just somehow bringing focus to this the whole game, the, the movie. Alright, if you scroll to the bottom of the code I added some uh, idea of constraining the, the movement so rather than pushing the left arrow off to the left side of the screen or moving off out of bounds to the right side I added this little um, Boolean logic. So the this uh, ampersand ampersand symbol, which is uh, shift seven, two of these means logical and. So if you want to uh, practice uh, understanding the Boolean logic, is uh, something that you should uh, search around for. But the idea is that both you have to press keyboard left and you have to be uh, your exposition of your main character must be bigger than a certain amount. So this, these numbers you have to play around with to, to figure out what's reasonable. So as long as you're bigger than a certain amount, you're allowed to move left. So you can see that we're changing the exposition to the left. Similarly, we have to move right, we must <clears throat> also be under a certain amount to be able to move right. So in this case, we're jumping left, jumping right, and when I run it, control enter, and I click start. I'm not allowed, even though I keep pressing left or right, I'm, I'm stuck on the sides here, which is good. We don't want to go out of bounds. That wouldn't be a fun game. Alright, so what else is new? I'm going to show you how to switch stages. So if you press shift F2 or go to window, other panels, uh, scene, it's going to show you some scenes here. So originally we only had scene one. You can double click and rename things. So we can rename it by double clicking into it and uh, what we did is you can also if you look down here in the scene manager you can create a new scene, add a scene, you can duplicate a scene, you can even delete a scene, you can even reorder scenes by clicking and dragging up and then down. So I'm just gonna create two new scenes, one's called the start scene, one's called the died scene. So here somehow you make a scene, you can use a text tool to type in some text here, double click in to change the text you might want to consider highlighting the text, going to properties, trying to change the actual uh, font or the color as well. You want to make sure that this uh, text box is dragged large enough so that you can, your text can fit in. So click on that bottom right corner there. So I'm going to click on the selection tool there. And we also made our own button. So the idea is our button, we just use a green fill color with a rectangular tool and we also created a text layer on top of it <clears throat> then we highlighted the entire button and we actually went right right click and convert to symbol and when you convert to a symbol we made it into a button we already did that so once you make something into a button you can double click into it you can take a look at the individual contents if we have more time in a future video we'll talk about how to do some customizations regarding your own custom mouse overs and whatnot but I'm going to get out of here. Let's go back to start here. Uh, this this button doesn't really look very fancy, but for our cases, is for our, for our particular purposes, it does the job. If you click on the button once using the selection tool, 
go to properties we called it start underscore button so if you look we're on the start scene here capital S start click on the frame one there's some code there the letter A means there's code go to window actions and you see that we have some uh, the keyword stop this function stop we have it on each different uh, scene so that flash doesn't just fly through scene to scene to scene scenes can be thought of as different stages in your game so it stops here so we added some code to the uh, start button button uh, uh, object <coughs> and the, the so this object here the the button object named the start button uh, is listening it's listening for a mouse click as soon as we click on it it's going to call the function start game and uh, so what's happening here is as soon as you click on start game it's going to actually go to and stop frame one scene one notice how scene one's within double quotes so that's the idea it jumps to the next scene so if I click on scene one we have a frame one as well here click on the frame one it does its game and then uh, if you look carefully window actions there should be something that says died I'm gonna press control F died and it shows it right here somehow when you die what we're doing is we're resetting the stage frame rate to 24 we don't want the game to always be at 60 frames per second we don't want it to be so fast right away we want to reset it and then of course go to and stop uh, frame one died so let's take a look at that last uh, scene here died so once again this is um, a button we call that btn underscore try again sometimes you will see the prefix btn representing button mc representing movie clip but uh, I just kind of use the paintbrush tool to type in you died but if you have Photoshop skills you might want to make a more fancy screen here so the idea here is that we have some code go to click on the frame one go to window actions and once again we have a stop button try again is listening for you to click on it and it calls the function try again and it's gonna go back to scene one frame one so it plays the game over and over again and when you actually go back to scene one uh, we have uh, the regular st stats reset if you click on the actions here go to window actions or F9 if I press control home it takes me to the top of the code and I see that this the score is reset to zero anyways so I don't have to worry about cleaning that up and the enemy speed is also reset here alright so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and you're well on your way to making some great games and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for uh, uh, subscribing, commenting, and rating.